What's going on everybody, Arkendry here with part 2 of my E3 thoughts. Today we will talk about Square Enix, Ubisoft, and PlayStation. If you haven't watched part 1, that will be linked in the description box below, as will be added to the end of this video. So, starting things off with Square Enix, they didn't do anything that you'll usually see in the other shows like Microsoft, Ubisoft, and Sony. It wasn't traditional at all. Everybody, you know, they, they have presenters, developers, celebrities, whatever, coming on stage and talking about a lot of things, the games, when it's detail about what the game is, what it's about, and things of that nature. They didn't do any of that. They just showed games and nothing but games for around 40 minutes, and that was it. We, you know, we got to see gameplay for the new Terminator, which is supposed to be you know, the final game in the prequel of Laura Quaff. Uh, our, old, our old enemies, Trinity, is coming back. There are some new additions to the combat system, some new abilities that Laura can do. Some new assassinations that, that, that look like they're straight from Assassin's Creed 3. A uh, new stealth system that you can, you can you know, blend in with, with the foliage better. You can you know, cover yourself in mud to not appear on you know, the, the light that shine around. So it looks amazing. The game itself looks amazing. These are the best Tomb Raider games to be created, in my opinion. Like A lot of people might be feeling nostalgic about the older games, but you know, these last three games, this one included, you know, the, the first one and the previous one, have been the best Terminator games that, they, that, that have been made, in my opinion. And frankly, I, I expect this one to be the best game for this genre entirely. And by genre, I mean games like, you know, uh, Tomb Raider, Un Uncharted, those kind of games, those Indiana Jones kind of games. This is, in my opinion, going to be the best one out of all of them. I think Twitter in general, just these these prequels for Larkov, have been the best in the genre, with this one being like the, like the top shelf, even above the, fir the first two games. They showed off a lot of games that I didn't really care about, but they, they did look cool, I guess. I'm not a huge fan of Japanese games to begin with, so a lot of the games they show was just, you know, not of interest to me. So in this video, I'm not going to talk about a lot of games like Kingdom Hearts and, and uh, Final Fantasy XIV and Monster Hunter. Those games don't really interest me, so I'm not going to talk about them outside of just mentioning their games that they showed off that I don't really care about. But even though I didn't play Dragon Quest... I think the new one that they're coming out with is a game that I actually want to play. It looks pretty cool. The, I, I've always been a big, big fan of the art design that they have. It's similar to Dragon Ball Z. And in general, as a Dragon Ball fan, anything with that art design is going to get my attention. But I never play in Dragon Quest, regardless of that. But seeing this one that they showed off at the conference, it looks cool. I might buy it. I definitely you know, have interest in it and want to see more from it. As well, they showed off, showed off a game called Babylon's Fall that looked really interesting. Pretty sure it's going to be only on PS4 and Steam, so if I wanted, I would have to build a PC or get a PS4. But it looks cool and interesting to see more on this game in, in the future. You know, I want to see what it's about more so, it's the gameplay, uh, what kind of customization does it have. Because you know, it kind of looks like a, a Dark Souls you know, kind of theme. Obviously, medieval games are going to point to that mindset. But who knows what, I don't know what this game actually is going to be. I have to look more into it and re research on, you know, what it, there is about this game. Is, is there anything else that leads to, you know, what kind of game this is going to, going to be. Overall, I like the showcase. It was all about the games and nothing else. As a grade, I would say it's a, a B. Uh, it would be not higher. It would be... Would be a higher score if I cared more about the games that they showed off. Now, like, again, I didn't really care about a lot of the games they showed, so I'm not going to talk about those games in the video. When we go to Ubisoft Showcase, it started off with the, with the performance of Just Dance. Do people even still play that game? Like, I was shocked to even see they're still doing Just Dance video games. And, like, with the depth of connect and nobody really plays Wii anymore, who plays Just Dance? Like, I, I heard there is for 360 in the Wii U, so I'm guessing that's there's, there's people on those devices that still play it. And that's weird to me that anybody will still be on. The 316 and Wii U, I, like I said, I guess there's an audience for it, and if there wasn't, it wouldn't be a new J Just Dance. Anyways, though, it's, it's a cool performance, I don't care about the game, but the performance itself was pretty interesting, it was pretty cool, it was entertaining, at least. It wasn't boring and bad like the Andrew WK performance at the Bethesda conference, so, you know, even though I don't care about the game, the performance was cool, I liked it. They did show off, you know, Beyond Good and Evil uh, prequel again. It said they do have a gameplay show behind closed doors and that they are opening their community page to everyone. I'm interested in this game. I never played the first Beyond Good and Evil game, but this is a prequel, so I suppose I wouldn't need to play the first game to understand what this game's about or anything of that nature. It looks cool. kind of reminds me of Fifth Element in terms of like the, the, the time period and how gritty the game looks. Hopefully it's a good game. Again, I don't, I don't know a lot about Beyond Good and Evil, so I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be a great game. I'm going to assume it's a great game because there's a huge cult following behind it. So hopefully we see some, some gameplay, you know, reveal in the future and we get a, you know, closer things to like a release date and what the plans are for the game. We got some more Division 2 gameplay, likely getting some new factions. They are adding specialist classes for each each character you, you can play as. Uh, there will be eight player raids, which should be fun. Really curious how that's going to look and how it's going to play. They say all the DLC, well, these episodes, as they're calling it, will be free. I'd assume there will also be a lot of microtransactions in the game in terms of like cosmetics that you can 
you know, because you're gonna have something that pays for the DLC. So I'm guessing you're gonna have, because usually like the, the, like the turning point. If you're gonna have free DLC, you're gonna have microtransactions to pay for those DLCs. You know, under under the hood. No, I'm excited for Division Two though. Like I enjoyed the first game. I know a lot of people wasn't that interested into it. I love Division. It's, it's a great to me. It's a a fun game to experience by yourself and with friends if you want to. So yeah, I'm looking forward to Division Two. Hope to see more about about that in Kingdom Hearts Beta. It showed off more skull and bones. The game looks unreal. Stunning graphics. It looks like Sea of Thieves, but actually good and worth playing. Definitely a brutal game, and like the Division, there will be special classes for each of the boats that's in the game. This is a pirate game. You know, it's a pirate game that, that looks worth playing. I'm not a big fan of pirate games, I'm not a big fan of the whole naval battle kind of thing, but I cannot wait for this game. This looks like a very fun game. It looks amazing. There is a beta coming forward, so we'll be able, to be able to experience it ourselves before the game comes out. You know, hopefully it's not like th it's not like Sea of Thieves where it comes out, you play, you're like, oh, there's nothing really to do in this game. This game is kind of boring. Meh. Hopefully it's not it's not that. Hopefully it's a great game. I kind of see it looking like basically the div like a division on the on water or you know, in, in multiplayer in terms it could be like a four honor on, on water. So there's a lot of things that you, that you can like kind of get a, a, a idea what kind of game this can and would be. They showed off a new IP called uh, Starlink. They showed it last year as well. It's a, a, sp a space fighter game that also allows you to build a toy jet that you can put on your that you can build on your controller. I don't really care about that. I guess I just want to play video games, not do Skylanders. I don't know. But at, at first, I didn't really care about this game. But then they announced that Star Fox will be in the game. That you can play as Star Fox. You can use Star Fox's ship. That alone got me interested into this game. Star Fox is awesome. So just by having Star Fox, I'm I'm going to buy this game. For Honor is getting a new faction, a Chinese faction th that is, and this is the first time that the game has got a new faction. It's been Knights, Samurai, and Vikings since day one. They've been adding new characters, but they've all just been for those three factions. So it's cool that there's going to be not only be a new faction, but as well a new game mode. So this might actually give me plans for Honor again. The new game mode is called Breach, and it looks like something that, that, that if you play Shadow of War, there was a, a a part of the game where you will be breaching strongholds, and that's what this looks like. It looks like you're gonna be, you know, just breaching strongholds, killing everything in sight, and then take it over and claim it for yourself. Um, lastly, for you saw they shut off the new Assassin's Creed game, which is not a continuation of, of Bayek, which is sad. And I was kind of hoping that we would get more of Bayek. Bayek was an amazing character; his voice actor did an amazing job. And to me, I think if people were able been able to play him for at least two more games, they would even more love Bayek even more than they do Ezio, who in my opinion is very overrated. But anyways, it was believed before that Bayek would be even returning. But nope, you get the chance to be to choose between two characters, male and female, from Sparta. It takes place in ancient Greece, around the same time period as the 300 Spartans. They actually had a part in the trailer that, that showed those Spartans losing to Persia. Um, gameplay looks, looks just like Origins with some minor changes. Basically, this game is just Origins reskin with ancient Greece and new characters. There is a dialogue world now, so this is more like Witcher, Fallout, Elder Scrolls, Mass Effect than any before. This game is becoming more and more like an RPG. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing that, that they are evolving Assassin's Creed. And because it's becoming more, more and more like an RPG, it's going to make the game even better and even, even uh, longer in terms of how much how long you're going to play the game. I still haven't even freaking beat Origins yet, and I've put like 100 hours into that game. So I can imagine how long this game is going to be if they're adding more and more RPG elements to it. It looks awesome. It comes out this year. I can't wait for it. I love Assassin's Creed. One of my favorite game franchises of all time. Overall, I give Ubisoft an A plus for their showcase. Ubisoft always has a good E3 showcase. They're probably... Their problem is usually that they downgrade their games and that they release unfinished products. But E3, they're usually always solid. Ubisoft always, you know, they come, they come out with their games. They show what they come out with. It's always entertaining. The presenters are always good. So as always, Ubisoft had a good showcase. Give them a plus. Last, we have the PlayStation conference, which made me miss the Bethesda conference because it was fucking boring. Like Bethesda conference was was cringy and boring, but this was just boring by itself. It wasn't cringy at all. Just. Oh, here's the thing, if you're going to have music performances, make sure they're interested, make sure you have them playing while gameplay is playing in the background, not just have someone on a stage doing music. I just don't really care about it. I want to I see video games, not watch a concert. You know, so they had a couple of boring music performances. Majority of the games they show were very slow paced, stealthy uh, gameplay. I swear all their games look exactly alike, but with different time periods. Like Last of Us 2, God of War, and the new game called uh, Ghost of uh, Shushimi or Shishima, however you pronounce it, they all look ex like the exact same game, but just different different time periods or just rotating different characters. Now, they, it's, it's like watching a Chris Christopher Nolan movie. They all look exactly the same, just one has Batman, one has World War II.
So, all jokes aside, Last of Us 2 looks good. It, I've never played Last of Us before, so I don't really know, you know what to look forward to in this game. I don't know what to look for in terms of you know, cameos or how important this character is or that character. But graphically, it looks fucking amazing. You know, they show gameplay for you. Can, you can play as Ellie, and the combat looks kind of like similar to this combat. One of my friends uh, jokingly called Ellie... Laura Cross daughter, but it looks good. I can't. I, I'm I'm interested into it. You know, if I get a PS4, I would definitely pick up both Last of Us 2 and Last of Us 1 to experience the first game to see you know what I missed when it came to that. And they announced Resident Evil 2 is getting a remake, uh, which is a good. It's going, which is going to be a multi-platform for those wondering. Sony did what they usually do, which is you know just show off games and not tell you if it's exclusive or multi-platform. So people was kind of confused, like is this only on PS4? But it's going to be multi-platform. It's going to be on P on uh, PC. It's going to be on the Xbox One. So they did show off a few multi-platforms, which you know if it, Xbox and uh, PS4, they're going to do that. They're going to show off a lot of multi-platform games. PS4 showed off their usuals like Destiny, Call of Duty, which is you know those are going to be obviously that you're going to see at their conference. But yeah. Resident Evil 2 Remake, that should be a really good uh, game and something to look forward to when it comes to you know, any kind of remake. You know, we haven't seen anything for uh, Final Fantasy 7, so maybe that's not coming out or they're just working on it for so long that they just figure, just put it off and don't show it at E3. Who knows what's going on when it comes to, to that remake? But again, Resident Evil 2, can't wait for that game. It's going to be fun. Resident Evil is always a good thing to experience and it's one of the best Resident Evil games of all time. They show some Death Stranding gameplay. I guess it looks cool. I don't really know. It's Kojima, so it's going to be a great story experience. It's going to be, you know, very in depth and amazing to experience in terms of story. Not sure it'll be a good gameplay experience. I don't. They, they don't really show anything that will lead me to believe that the gameplay is going to be fun. You know, it's a it's a, a visually nice game to, to look at, and it has a star-studded cast. But a star-studded cast doesn't mean a good game. Lastly, the game that I cared about the most when it came to this conference was Spider-Man. It looks fun. The game has great graphics. It looks like a typical Spider-Man video game, which isn't a bad thing. As long as it's a fun game, that's all that matters. Spider-Man is one of my favorite characters in, in, from Marvel, so I'm looking forward to this game. Again, I don't have a PS4, but this is a game that will make you buy a PS4. You know, we have seen gameplay. It has all his villains. You know, They'll be in the game, as well as there's someone who they're teasing but didn't reveal. At the end of the trailer, Spider-Man, he goes, you? Then it just cuts off. So it's like... Who is this person who had who you know is so secretive and they they had to cut off the trailer so you don't see who it is? So kind of intrigued on who, on who that character will, will be. Will it be Craven the Hunter? Will it be like a, a hero turned bad? Uh, will it be you know Harry Osborn as the Goblin? So who knows? It'll be, it'll be a lot of things they they can do when it comes to you know who is the main villain of this game. You know, it sucks that this is only going to be a PS4 game, so I don't know if I will or won't be able to play it again. I don't own a PS4, and I do want one, so it's not like I don't I don't have one because I don't like it. I do want a PS4, I just monetarily can't get one right now. But I do want one, and if I do get one, Spider-Man is going to be the first game that I get for PS4. Overall, it was an average showcase, nothing amazing, nothing that had me on the edge of my seat. A lot of a lot of it was, was boring. Uh, I give it a B, I one reason why it's not lower than a B is because Spider-Man and Last of Us 2, those are the two games that got my attention the most. I guess Ghost of uh, Shishimi or Shishima, whatever, I'm sorry if I can't pronounce that right, I'm dumb. But um, those are the games that I care about the most that they show that will get me wanting to own a PS4. But outside of that, it was kind of just a men kind of showcase and those games elevated this from being a lower grade into being a B. But that's it for this video, guys. Hope you all enjoy my E3 videos. I, d I do these every year, just my opinions on you know, the, the big showcases at Nintendo. Obviously, I don't really care about Nintendo's products. I don't play it. I haven't played a Nintendo game in forever. I've, I haven't owned a Nintendo game since the 64. So I should tell you my opinion on Nintendo games. I'm not saying that they're not for everyone. I'm just saying that for me personally, they haven't had anything on Nintendo that makes me want to buy a Nintendo product. But anyways, guys, you know, it, it was a good overall show. The winner to me of E3 is multi-platform games and the owners of, of and the owners of multiple systems. So if you, if you own all the systems, to, you, you won E3. You, you're getting the best games when it comes to E3 because you own all the systems. But overall, again, multi-platform games won E3. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the previous video as well. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.